and welcome back to another communion. I'm going to read from Acts 12 today, verse 20 to 24, and it's just after Peter was freed from prison. And it says, Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord, and having made Blatus the king's personal aid their friend, they asked for peace, because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of a god and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, because he did not give glory to God, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. On that one more verse. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. I love this passage because there's so much goes on in it. I don't know what that looked like to say this guy, Herod, was eaten with worms and he died. Pretty grim. But he was a guy who didn't give glory to God. But those last few verses, the uh, and the angel of God stepped in and really judged Herod and he was killed because he didn't give glory to God. But straight after that it says the word of God grew and multiplied. And straight after that it says Paul and Barnabas when they'd fulfilled their ministry. So I love this because, I'm just reading it today, and I love this because it shows how in control God is. Those who turn against God, God will ultimately say time's up. He will ultimately say that's it you can do no more. And, and so Herod came to a pretty sad end, but he just lived for himself. But the contrast is the word of God grew and multiplied. And I believe that's going to happen today. We're going to see the word of God multiply in our generation as well. And straight after that, Paul and Barnabas returned, having fulfilled their ministry. And I believe that God wants us to fulfill our ministry, having finished it. We will finish it one day. Hopefully, I, well, I don't know how long that will be, but we will fulfill our ministry. So God's still in control. This is Saturday here. Hope you like the background, by the way. The background is flying into Guatemala City in uh, Guatemala. I took this picture from the plane once. We're doing a couple of conferences there. And uh, you see the, uh, the uh, volcanoes in the background. It's a beautiful, beautiful way to fly into Guatemala City. But the Word of God will grow. The Word of God will, will be fulfilled, and, or the Word of God will multiply, and we will fulfill our ministries. Now, Jemima is going to read today from Matthew chapter 26. And again, well, I guess we probably almost know these off by heart. It's the breaking of the bread together. If we can find it there, Matthew. There we go. Uh, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So let's get our bread. You might need to pause the video and get yourself ready, but I imagine you probably are ready. But we're going to break bread here today, Jemima and I, and we're going to remember that Jesus died for us. I want to encourage you to do this with us. This is, as I've said every time, or most times, this is a strength-giving exercise. What we're doing is, we may all be different circumstances today. Some of us might be going through a tough time. Some of us may be just floating along. I don't know, but we're facing different things. But this is a great leveler. And what it does is it puts our life into focus. You might not be feeling too good today. Maybe circumstances are coming against you. Maybe you're self-isolating. I don't know. But what this does is it says, hey, we're going to focus and turn our eyes to Jesus today. We're going to take this bread, take this cup and we're going to remember that he died for us so let's take it and eat together in Jesus name after supper he took the cup and at the cross this is the uh, we remember the new covenant not the old covenant that had to be repeated this is a memorial of the new covenant which was shed once for us. So let's drink together, thankful that Jesus gave his life for us. Let's drink together. Don't 
don't worry about the noise around us. There's some folk working just outside this wall. That's why it feels like there's a, a drill from a dentist in the place, but that's okay. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to touch us today. Father, we come as your family, as your children today. We come before you recognizing that regardless what's around us, the evil that we see around us, it will one day pass away. You'll say that's enough. But Lord, thank you that the word of God will spread, it will multiply, its effect will multiply in this world. And Lord, we will fulfill our ministries, whatever they are. And so God, we come to you as your children. We ask for your strength. We ask for your encouragement, particularly to those who are feeling lonely all on their own. Lord, will you be their encouragement today and help us, Father, as we seek to follow you. Strengthen us today as we remember the Lord one more time in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you today. We're going to be back with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, and it's a very special day. You'll be in your church. Some of you going back to your churches tomorrow. Some are opening tomorrow. Some of you have already been going back for a long time, and some of you will still be digital. And many of you, of course, also will choose to be digital because you don't want to physically go back in yet. That's fine. I pray you'll have a wonderful time tomorrow. But please join with us tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock here in the UK, 2 p.m. in Texas, and let's bring our request to the Lord and really pray that God will continue. We need to pray that God will speed this up. You know, Boris Johnson this week proclaimed that this is going to be for six months. That's had a, a horrific effect on people in our country because for the first time, it's not weeks we're looking for, he's declared that it's six months. Now that's, we're facing the coldest, the darkest nights of the year. And that's caused a lot of fear in this nation. We need to pray against that fear. So please join with us tomorrow night so we can declare war and fear and we can enjoy the, the freedom that the Lord gives us. So we'll see you tomorrow here at 8 o'clock. God bless you.